Proved it in a trapezium, the line connecting the midpoints of the two non-parallel sides is also parallel to the two parallel sides and equal to half the sum. Okay, let us begin. First, we'll try to understand the problem graphically. Now, let's say we have a trapezium A, B, C, and D. So, here AB is going to be parallel to DC. Now, we will consider the two non-parallel sides. That means the side AD and BC. Let's say we have a point E on AD such that E is going to bisect ED. Or we can say E divides AC into ratio 1 is to 1. Similarly, on the other side BC, we are going to consider a point F. F by 6 BC, that means it divides it into ratio 1 is to 1. Now, we will be joining point E and point F. Our goal will be to prove that EF, this side, AF is parallel to the side DC and it is also parallel to the side AB. And we need to show that EF equals half the sum of AB and C and DC. So, here what we'll do, we'll try to prove this with the help of vector. So here we'll be using vector. So we'll show that EF vector is a equals to half of the sum of AB vector plus DC vector. Fine. Now, what we'll do, we will start by considering the position vectors of all the four vertices of the trapezium. So let us suppose that A vector corresponds to the position vector of A, B vector corresponds to the position vector of vertex B, C vector will be the position vector of C and D vector will be the position vector of D. That means that we have some point O which is going to be the origin of a coordinate system and we can join point O and point A with the help of a directed line segment and that is going to give us the position vector of the vertex A. Similarly, we can define the position vector B, C and D. So here we are considering O A vector to be A vector, O B vector to be B vector, OC vector to be C vector and OD vector to be the vector D. Now using these four vectors, we'll try to find out the position vector of point E and point F. So let's first find out the position vector of the midpoint E. Now here E divides AD into ratio 1 is to 1 internally. So here we can use the internal section formula. This simply means that OE vector is going to be equals to a vector plus D vector divided by 1 plus 1, which is simply 2. So we have defined the position vector of the midpoint E. Next, we will define the position vector of point F. So we have OF vector defined by B vector plus C vector all divided by 2. Now let's label this as equation number 1 and OF vector as equation number 2. We'll now try to prove that EF is parallel to DC and AB. Now from this particular diagram, it's clear that AB is parallel to DC. We have AB vector parallel to DC vector. Now if AB vector is parallel to DC vector, we can also say that AB vector is going to be equals to some scalar lambda times the vector DC. Fine. Now what is AB vector? AB vector is nothing but in terms of the position vector, it's going to be OB vector minus OA vector. That will be equals to lambda times DC vector. So DC vector in terms of the position vector will be OC vector minus OD vector. Now in place of OB vector, we can replace it with B vector. OA vector will be A vector. That will be equals to lambda times C vector minus D vector. Now let this be equation number 3. We are going to keep it aside for the time being. Now what we will do? Now we will try to find out the vector EF. Now what is EF? EF vector is simply defined as OF vector minus OE vector. We have already defined OF vector and OE vector in equation 1 and 2. The OF vector that is given by B vector plus C vector all divided by 2 minus OE vector, so that's going to be A vector plus D vector divided by 2. Now let's combine them, and this is going to give us the vector. Uh, we have 2 in the denominator, and the numerator we have B vector plus C vector minus A vector minus D vector. Now, we will do one thing. We'll combine B vector and minus A vector and make it a single vector. This will get added to C vector minus D vector, whole divided by 2. 
Now, what is b vector minus a vector? According to equation 1, it's lambda times c vector minus d vector. So in place of b vector minus a vector, we can replace it with lambda times c vector minus d vector. Add it to c vector minus d vector. Whole divided by 2. Now, we can take lambda uh, c vector minus d vector as the common vector. So that means we have lambda plus 1 whole divided by 2. This gets multiplied to the vector c vector minus d vector. And this is our vector e f. And c vector minus d vector, that is nothing but our vector dc. So we have lambda plus 1 whole divided by 2. This is our vector dc. So we have e f vector. So we, we have found that e f vector equals to some scalar. We don't have to worry about the value of lambda, but lambda plus 1 over 2, that's a scalar. That's all that we need to know. The scalar times dc vector, and this tells us that e f vector is going to be parallel to dc vector. Fine. Similarly, what we can do, we can rewrite equation number 3. Now, equation number 3 can be also expressed as c vector minus d vector equals to 1 over lambda times b vector minus a vector. Uh, let's simplify 1 over lambda. Let's call it mu. We have mu times v vector minus a vector. Well, we have assumed where we are assuming that mu equals 1 over lambda. Now, again, e f vector. So we can take the same uh, steps. Uh, we are going to skip everything. We're going to go straight away uh, to this particular step. So e f vector can be rearranged as b vector minus a vector added to c vector minus d vector whole divided by 2. Now this time what we'll do, we'll replace c vector minus d vector with la mu, min, uh, mu times added to mu times b vector minus a vector whole divided by 2. Now this will be equals to mu plus 1 whole divided by 2 multiplied to b vector minus a vector. Now b vector minus a vector, that is nothing but the vector a b. So we have mu plus 1 over 2 multiply to a b vector and this is e f vector so here we have shown that e f vector equals to some scalar times the vector a b this shows that e f vector is going to be parallel to the vector a b hence our e f e f is the segment formed by joining the two non-parallel midpoints of the two non-parallel sides of a trapezium so that's parallel to the vector a b and it is also parallel to the vector DC. So the first part is now done. Moving on to the second part of the proof. Again, we'll be using the fact that EF vector, so that is defined by OF vector, the position vector of point F minus the position, vec uh, position vector of the point E. So OF vector, we have already obtained that's defined by B vector plus C vector divided by 2. Minus OE vector, so that's A vector plus D vector all divided by 2. Let's keep half as the common vector. So we have half multiplied to B vector plus C vector minus A vector minus D vector. And this will be equals to half. So here we're going to keep B vector minus A vector as one single vector. This will get added to C vector minus D vector. This will be half multiplied to now what is b vector minus a vector that's simply the vector a b so we have a b vector added to c vector minus d vector is going to be the vector d c so we have proved the second part as well so e f vector uh, is going to be equals to half the sum of the uh, the two parallel sides hence proved